Hey kids, tonight is pajama night, right? I've got my bathrobe here and I even brought my bare cozy slippers to keep warm. Well, this seems to be one of the favorite dress up nights in WOW. Tell me, how many of you snuggle with a stuffed animal when you go to bed at night? Teddy bear or something else? Or who has a favorite pillow? Do you ever dream while you sleep? You know, sometimes our dreams can be pretty crazy, can't they? But tonight, we're going to learn about an amazing dream that was real. But first, let's talk about our woodland creature this week. It's an owl. God made owls especially good at seeing it in the nighttime. They don't need a flashlight like we do to go out in the dark. I brought my little flashlight. No, they can see really well. An owl can easily fly through a dense forest in complete darkness, missing every tree. Owls have these huge gleaming eyes that are fixed forward. Do you know they cannot move their eyes around like we can? Can you roll your eyes with me like this, around and around? Owls can't do that. They're fixed forward. But what they can do is turn their neck, their head around. And uh, do you know it can go all the way backwards and even more? 270 degrees. That's almost in a whole circle. So owls can see all angles, even behind them, without moving their body at all. The owl's distance vision is also exceptionally good. Owls hear well, too. When hunting, they are very still and quiet so that they can hear the tiniest movements of their prey, maybe a mouse or a mole. The owl's ability to see in the darkness and listen carefully make them successful hunters. That may be why owls have been called wise creatures. Have you ever heard the saying, wise old owl? It comes from an old English nursery rhyme that goes like this, listen. A wise old owl lived in an oak. The more he saw, the less he spoke. The less he spoke, the more he heard. Why can't we all be like that wise old bird? That poem suggests that we become wise when we're good at watching and listening. Because that's how we learn, isn't it? Well, God wants us to be wise, to make wise choices. How do we become wise? We learn wisdom by seeing how Jesus lived his life and imitating him, and also by listening to God's word and obeying it. Our verse this week says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2, 6. Will you say that together with me? For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2, 6. Well, another good verse about wisdom is found in Psalm 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. Make no mistake. True wisdom comes from God and his word. When we learn God's wisdom, we can make good choices. Can you think of some examples of good, wise choices that someone your age might make? Think about it. How about memorizing your Bible verses? Obeying your parents the first time they ask you to do something? Or... Treating your brother or sister with kindness and patience. Those are all good choices, aren't they? What about some examples of poor choices? 
maybe lying about something that you broke, or speaking disrespectfully to parents or teachers, or cheating on your schoolwork. Those are poor choices, and those are called sin. You know, our lives are made up of all the little choices we make every day. If you want to be wise, when you're faced with a choice, first stop and think. Ask yourself a couple questions. The first question you can ask yourself is this. What does God's word say about my situation? We want to follow God's instructions, right? An example is, Honor your father and mother. Here's another question to ask yourself. What choice would Jesus make? What decision is in line with the character of Jesus? In other words, would Jesus tell a lie? Of course not. So I shouldn't tell one either. Would Jesus be patient and kind? Of course. And so that's what I want to be too. Well, the Bible is full of stories of people who have made good, wise choices and those who have made poor ones. After King David died, his son Solomon took the throne. One day, King Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings to worship and honor the Lord. That night, the Lord appeared to him in a dream. In the dream, God spoke to Solomon and said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Can you imagine that? It reminds me of the story of Aladdin. Remember where Aladdin finds an old dusty lamp and when he rubs it, a genie comes out and grants him three wishes. Well, but this Bible story, it is not a fairy tale like Aladdin. Solomon's story really happened. Ask for whatever you want me to give you, God said to Solomon. That would blow my mind. What would you ask for? Think about it. Let's find out what Solomon asked for. In 1 Kings chapter 3, starting at verse 7. Now, O Lord my God, you have made me king instead of my father David. But I am like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous they cannot be counted. Give me a wise and understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? Did you hear that? Solomon asked for wisdom. How do you think God felt about his request? Well, God was very pleased. He said that Solomon's request was not selfish. He could have asked to be the richest man in the whole world. He could have wished to be 150 years old, or he could have wished for the death of his enemies. But instead, Solomon chose to ask for wisdom so that he could be a good leader of God's people, the Israelites. Let's read again how God responded to Solomon's request. So God replied, because you have asked for wisdom, I will give you what you asked for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart, such as no one else has ever had or ever will have. And I will also give you what you did not ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. And if you follow me and obey my decrees and my commands, as your father David did, I will give you a long life. Then Solomon woke up and realized it had been a dream. Wow, King Solomon made a wise choice and God blessed him in amazing ways. Now I want to look at another man in the Bible who had an important choice to make. One day, 
a rich young ruler came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, what good thing must I do to have eternal life? He asked. Well, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments, Jesus replied. Which ones? He inquired. Well, Jesus recited the Ten Commandments and then told the man to also love his neighbors as much as he loves himself. Well, I've kept them all, the young man said. What am I still missing? Jesus answered, If you want to be complete, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Well, when the rich young ruler heard what Jesus said, he suddenly looked downcast. The man turned and sadly walked away because he had great wealth and did not want to give it all away to follow Jesus. You know, I think that story is so sad. Here is Jesus, the king of the universe, standing right in front of this man, inviting him to be one of his followers. But what did the man choose? He chose his money and possessions over Jesus and eternal life. That was not a wise choice. Rejecting Jesus is the worst choice of all. In truth, boys and girls, Jesus stands before each one of us with that same invitation to leave the world, the things of the world behind and to come and follow him. What will your choice be? Will you make the wise choice to love and follow Jesus? What does God want for us? He wants us to have his wisdom so that we can make good choices. We get that wisdom by obeying God's word and by imitating the attitudes and actions of Jesus. Let's say this week's theme together. I can make wise choices. One more time. I can make wise choices. By wireless from the BBC, Her Majesty the Queen of the Netherlands. Fellow Hollanders, the lights have gone out over free Holland. Where only two weeks ago there was a free nation of men and women brought up in the cherished tradition of Christian civilization, there is now the stillness of death. Oppressed, threatened, watched on every side by a power that would tear out all hope from the soul of man. The unhappy people of Holland can only pray in silence. Last time in our story, Nazi soldiers came storming into the Ten Boom House looking for Jews and to arrest Corey, Betsy, and Father Casper for helping them. The Jews ran to hide inside the tiny room behind Corey's closet just before the officer burst into the bedroom. The Nazi officer tried to get Corey to tell him where the Jews were hiding, but she remained silent, even though he hit her many times. Corey was bloody and bruised. Soon the family was loaded onto a truck and taken to a terrible prison. Again, they were questioned by a German officer. He was rough and rude to everyone but Father Casper. He could see the man was old and frail and must have felt some pity for him. I'll send you home, old man, if you just give me your word that you will not harbor Jews anymore. What a chance for Father Casper! Would he seize the opportunity to return to the comfort of his own home? Instead of suffering in prison, Father's answer was clear and direct. If I am set free today, I shall open my home again tomorrow to anyone in need. At this reply, the officer in charge was furious. 
Now there would be no mercy for the Ger from the Germans for Father Casper. They were all led away one by one to dark, filthy prison cells. In her prison cell, Corey had lots of time to think. What kind of thoughts do you think she had? Were they thoughts of anger and hatred toward the Nazis? No. Was she in great despair and discouragement? No. Corey chose to think about God and his words in the Bible. And Corey prayed to God for wisdom, for strength and help. It was then that she remembered how Jesus had suffered in prison himself right before he went to the cross to die. And he knew what it was like. She focused her thoughts on her wonderful Savior, Jesus. And he took away all her fears and gave her peace in her heart in that terrible, dark place. Corey also thought about the Jews in the hiding place behind her bedroom closet, and she prayed for them. There were six terrified people cowering in that small, stuffy space. There was only enough room for four of them to sit at a time. So they took turns sitting and standing, and no one could sleep. The raid happened at the worst possible time, one of them whispered. Why? asked a scared little girl. Because someone made a mistake and took the food and water out earlier today. Shh, another said. They might hear us. Oh, how will we ever know if it is safe to come out? A Jewish man wondered. Well, next week, We'll find out about the hidden Jews. But let's think for a minute about Father Casper's choice. Who thinks he made a wise choice? Who thinks he made a poor choice? You know, he could have been released if he promised not to help the Jews anymore. But Father Casper made the difficult but the best choice by honoring God and helping others. You know, sometimes wise choices are not easy, but God will always help us. Let's say our theme together. I can make wise choices. Will you make the wise choice to ask Jesus to be your savior? If you haven't done that before, you can do that tonight. And will you make the wise choice to always love and follow Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you so much for all you've done for us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for your word, the Bible, where we can learn how to make wise choices, how to follow you and obey you. Lord, please help us not to make poor choices, but wise choices as we Learn your word and trust and obey you, Lord. Even when it's hard, help us to make the wise choice. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, kids! Welcome to WOW Tonight. It's been a great night so far, and I'm so excited to continue the night. Tonight is pajama night. Now, Eddie the Eagle, you don't wear pajamas. Instead, he brought a snake. Eddie, this is kind of a, I don't know, scary animal. Kind of reminds me of our Fear Factor night. But if that's your stuffed animal you sleep with, go ahead. Did any of you bring a stuffed animal? Let me see. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, who is wearing pajamas? Who's who decided to log on in wearing pajamas? Oh, that's awesome. You know, I ain't wearing my pajamas, but instead I have my favorite pillow that I sleep with. I always rest my head just like this. And pretty soon I am sleeping away. Well, tonight is a fun night because um, when you sleep, have you ever heard somebody snore? Maybe you've heard your mom and dad snore. Maybe you have a brother and sister that snores, or maybe um, you snore yourself. 
Eddie the Eagle, don't you snore? <laughs> yeah, he does snore. And it sounds like this, let's listen. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's what Eddie the Eagle sounds like when he snores. Okay, I wanna hear what you all sound like when you snore, okay? So everybody give me your best snoring noise in three, two, one. <gasps> All right, great job, you know, Eddie the Eagle. He was kind of laughing at me because that is how I snore. That's right, I do sometimes snore a little bit as well. Ah, but that's okay because, well, everybody kind of snores a little bit. Well, Eddie the Eagle, kids, do you remember what animal we're talking about tonight? I'll give you a hint, it's on my table. That's right, we're talking about the wise old owl. Now, did you know that owls are nocturnal. That's right, while we're all sleeping and snoring, owls are wide awake themselves. But they're also very wise. And tonight, we talked about how, you know, we need to make the wise choice. Like owls who are always looking and observing, watching for prey and looking at what is out there. We can do the same thing, but we can look into the Bible and God's truth and we can observe and watch what Jesus did. How did he live his life? How did he love others? What did he instruct us to do? And after observing and seeing what Jesus is doing, we can then copy him. We can live just like Jesus did. And by living like Jesus did, we can make sure that we are making the wise choice. We can kind of be like wise old owls, always making sure that we're observing Jesus and making the wise choice. Now in our Bible story today that Miss Marcia talked about, we talked about two people. One of them made a really wise choice. One of them didn't. Do you remember who made the wise choice in our Bible story? Do you remember who it was? That's right, it was King Solomon who made the wise choice, who had the option of riches or long life, but instead, he just wanted to wisely rule his people. And God blessed him because of that, because he made a wise choice. Now, do you remember who was the person that um, didn't make the wise choice? That's right, the rich young ruler. Jesus asked him just to give away all of his items. Items that both of us know aren't going to follow him in, into heaven, right? You're, you don't carry all your items into heaven with you. And so he just needed to get rid of his stuff and follow Jesus. And instead of doing that, he sadly made the unwise choice. He decided his items were more important than following Jesus. And so he turned around and walked away. Friends, we have two examples, an example of making the wise choice, an example of making the unwise choice. My hope and my prayer for you today is that we all can follow the example of making the wise choice. So with that in mind, let's make an awesome choice right now to stand up and to praise God together. Here we go.
Friends, you can go ahead and have a seat. I have a question for you. Will you make the wise choice to love and follow Jesus? Well, what's our bottom line for today? Our bottom line is I can make wise choices. That's right. Can everybody pretend you're an owl? Here's how we're going to pretend. We're going to go like this, shrink our heads, and we're going to look around and say, I can make wise choices. Ready? And then we're going to who after because that's what owls do. Ready? I can make the wise choice. Woo. Great job being an owl and stating our bottom line for tonight. Do you know our memory verse? All right, our memory verse is from Proverbs 2, 6. This is such, I mean, all of these verses we talk about every night are great to have in your heart. This one is a fantastic one as well to keep in your heart and to memorize and to know throughout the rest of your life. And it says, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Proverbs 2, 6. The Lord gives wisdom. And the Bible instructs us all we have to do for that wisdom is ask. We got to ask for it. We got to study the Bible and know how to make the wise choice. Friends, I have a fun game for us to play after that wise choice. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to do a snoring contest because we are talking about owls. It is pajama night. It just fits. Okay, so here's how the snoring contest is going to work. On the count of three, I want you to go ahead and give me your best snore that you have. Leaders, I want you to listen to these snores that are happening and pick out the top three kids who are giving the best snores. Are you ready? One, get your pillow ready. Get your pajamas ready. Get into sleepy mode. Two, get your noses ready. Three, give me your best snore. (laughs) Okay, kids, keep snoring. Leaders, let's listen. Let's listen. And stop snoring. Hey, great job. All of you did a good job. Give yourself a pat in the back. All right, leaders, go ahead. Who do you think gave the best snore? You know, I think you are right. Let's everybody give them a round of applause. Woo! Great job. Well, tonight, we're not sleeping yet because we still have an awesome worship song. So go ahead, stand up on your feet, and let's get ready to sing our last worship song for tonight. Patiently I'll wait And I will rest upon his promise Patiently I'll wait
trust in Him with all my Kids, go ahead and have a seat. I just have our closing announcements before we head out for tonight. Well, and before you head out to practice your memory verses. Next week, make sure you come back because it is sticker night. Here's what I want you to do. Take as many stickers as you have and stick them all over your body, on your arms, on your face, on your head, on the side of you, wherever you want, and then come to WOW and let's see how many stickers you have on you. And then if you want to go the extra mile, here's what to do. Count up however many verses you have completed, take a sticker sheet, and just put that on a piece of paper. And we're going to hold it up to the screen next week so that every other kid can see this is how many verses I was able to to complete, and then we'll count it up and see which class and which grade has been able to create and, excuse me, has been able to memorize the most verses, which I think is awesome. So sticker night, make sure to bring that. And also make sure to start memorizing verse memorization lesson number 22 in advance for Wednesday. Until then, friends, I'm going to pray for us. Take your hands, let's clap them together. Boom! Let's pray and just thank God for an awesome night and ask him to help us make the wise choice. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the opportunity to learn more about you, Lord, to learn about the stories, the true stories in scripture of people through you who made the wise choice and people through you that had the option of making the wise choice, Lord, and didn't. I pray that we would learn from both stories, God, to follow you, to observe and trust what you are doing, God, to act like you would, and to make the wise choice. May you equip us and may you empower us to make the wise choice, starting tonight in your holy and precious name. Everyone said, amen, amen. All right, kids, we'll see you later. Make sure you are making the wise choice. Bye. Now, Eddie, why did you choose a snake?